You're listening to The Adventuring Party, talking about gaming the Irish way. Welcome to the party. I'm Owen. I'm Dave. And I'm a very sneaky warlord scar with a great and powerful plan. Hey, hear that by the door? Must be something, right? No, that must be nothing. Oh my god! Oh my gear's gone! And my money! And my sense of integrity! I think I've just been robbed. I think someone's pulled. A heist! Dun dun! Yeah! So, this week, we're going to be talking about heists in RPGs. And specifically, how you as a GM handle a heist. Now, what is a heist? For some people, a heist would just be any plan to steal something. Which could be as complex as, I punch the guy... I grab the bag of money, I run out the door. Uh, Not quite. But for other people, a heist is, oh, we've got to put together a team of people. You know, we've got to have a lot of jazz music playing in the background. We've got to be, you know, putting together this elaborate plan and scoping out the location, figuring out the defences. It's a multi-session planner, and then we go do the heist. So, Scar, what is your experience of heists? Uh, well, I'm as I say, I'm a very improv and player led GM, and I tend to fi- find that in that kind of environment, it's going to depend an awful lot on the group you have and how paranoid you've made them with your dangerous encounters and such. I, I, I'm the kind of person who's very happy to when once I notice uh, my players are starting to plan something to just shut up and listen to what they're saying and use that to inform what the, uh, the the vibe that they're going for for this next idea has. And also, you know, very important thing to figure out what they've assumed that they don't actually, uh, but I don't actually know properly. And so that, you know, hurriedly putting together my notes to figure out, oh, I should probably feed them this information or uh, things is, <sighs> I, th- I find that one of the, the elements to have is, there's planning to do it, and there's planning to find out. You know, the, the, the scouting element, the, you know, casing the joint, figure out, you know, where all the traps are, where the landmines are. Do they have a squad of very burly orcs in the back with chainsaws? You know, that bit can often be overlooked by a, a group that focuses a lot on, oh, this is what we have. We have uh, these potions, and uh, these skills at plus 13 and once a blue moon the carrot gets a free invisibility spell so we should probably do the highest in the full moon so as a GM you're sort of I find I'm sort of having to balance like it's just like often the difficulty with these kids plans is feeding the, the, the right information onto players as they execute it uh, sometimes you have hand uh, help uh, I know one particular heist uh, players pulled off. The big benefit was that they had a basically NPC, like feeding them basically their infiltration method, and you know giving them a, an objective, and that could be different from another situation where maybe they just have their own objective and therefore they're 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 more willing to instead of it becoming a heist, it becomes more of a. I think the term is recon and force, where they walk in basically to shoot information out of the the enemy and plan on the fly. So uh, so one one side I find myself permissive to this kind of planning and and planning-focused elements and, you know, the back and forth of what do you know, what do you don't know, but at the same time, to encourage subtlety requires a specific setup and a lot of RPGs if they are very big on empowering the player as they are, it can be harder to put the players in the GMing mi- the the heisting mindset, I guess. Uh, Dave, have you had a particular heist gone wrong? I know you've played a lot of cyberpunk. Uh, yes, I have played a lot of cyberpunk. Uh, yeah, uh, just the, the, I was just thinking about the word recon and how it's. It might it 
heists tend to require at least one of two two things to, to, to work out, and preferably both. Like recon, as in the characters, uh, the characters, uh, or some or somebody they trust scoping out scoping out the place, uh, get, you know, gathering intelligence, or indirectly getting well the word of the street about the place, uh, investigating through indirect means. If you try to do a heist blind, I, I based on assumptions, as in, oh yeah, they'll they'll. they'll be such you know it's a small enough shop there'll be such and such security blah 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 that's you're asking for complications a, 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 like a, a, you know a, 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 a gm would almost be a miss not to have something go horribly awry for, for such a group preferably through something planned originally as in oh yeah this shop has a very nasty guard dog like you know with cyber teeth or whatever <laughs> And oh, they didn't bother to even ask around about the place. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. He's got rocket mended teeth, so when he bites you, the teeth fire rockets and basically drive into you. So you, you, you get more teeth in you. Uh, so for me, right, what I often think of there's kind of two approaches to running a heist um, as a GM. One of them is you let the players plan out for as long as they want and gather as much information as they want. And what happens then is that they might spend a session or two sessions or three sessions figuring out everything about the location, figuring out about the mark, figuring out what they need to do. And then they go to the heist. The second approach is you just go, right, we're doing a heist grant. We're starting a heist. We're going to you guys are going to have to roll with everything that happens. And that second one needs some mechanical support to actually feel like a heist. And we'll talk about that in a second, because the first thing you need to talk about with a heist is in any film that does heists, the general mechanic or the general layout of it is there's this whole thing where they explain the obstacles, they put together a crew or do the training required to get over the obstacles. They go in and are doing the obstacles and then a twist happens. And if players are expecting something like that, you are obligated to provide them with a twist. Ah, uh, yes. GM and player uh, expectations, which, yeah, should be hashed out ahead of time, really. Now, how bad that twist is, is definitely a individual table thing. But some GMs would be okay with and then you get to the end, and the masked stranger steps out behind the curtain, steals the oak out of front of you, and goes, ha ha ha, it escapes a lot. And that's an epic plot. Which would, which would boil the pee of some players quite a bit. Other people, there might be, there's an unexpected factor there, there's something else going on there, there's a different set of defences they aren't ready for there, and they have to kind of improv and get around them. And then some people will do one twist, or two twists, or three twists. And have the players feeling like all of their preparation was basically worthless. So there's a danger there when you go in and say, yeah, there's going to be some twists. And then it ruins the plan. Or the GM listens to the plan and then goes, right, I'm going to come up with a bunch of counters to that. Uh, I have known I have known player groups who have refused to plan when the GM is in the room. Because they don't want to give the GM ideas. Now, you can talk about how healthy that relationship is, but it's how I've w- watched it happen. And planning took place be- between sessions or waited till the GM left the room to discuss certain aspects, you know? I'm worried that this is going to happen. What do we do about that? And sometimes you get, like, miscommunications over that or basically people kind of planning for effectively different heists. But there's a choice there. You can either have the heist where everything's planned and it goes out without a hitch, or you have the heist where there's some twists and maybe the GM decides, okay, I'm going to roll a D4 minus one. Um, and that's how many twists there are. Or a D4 minus two or whatever, whatever you want to yourself. And the four, but the four explodes. If I get a four, I get an additional twist. Well, when you say, when you, <clears throat> excuse me, when you say twist, there's, um, there's a distinction there between like twists that the player, like the players aren't from, I are, don't know are coming up necessarily where the gem knows okay because this is a cyberpunk game there's going to be some backstab like there's going to be some backstabbing like 
uh, not every empl- not every cyberpunk employer is going to try and backstab the the you know the the player characters, but some absolutely are. And then there are twists where the GM e- either they emerge organically, as in oh such and such a gang actually do have their party here, their 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 weekly party here, and that is something nobody remembered uh, until the, they consulted until somebody looked at notes. Or completely randomly generated, as in the GM, the German players, neither of them went into the session knowing that that particular twist existed in that form. As in, I, you know, like you say, roll a d4, and oh, it's, uh, you know, like a, it's a, yeah, like a, it's a street uh, cyber kickboxing festival's gone off. Yeah, and depending where you land on the um, the genre conventions of twists, you know, some of those would be appropriate, and some are. You know, going to be just seem arbitrary and madness. And a lot is going to depend on, well, like, are you like who 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 suggested the heist is going to be one of your big factors? Like, did the players, you know, look at their options, their their personal objectives, their their ideas for you know what to do to and they say, all right, we need to steal the bloodstock diamond or whatever. You know, like, do we need to break into um, you know, wherever that diamond is and uh, get that diamond at by any means necessary and, uh, you know, go do the quest or the payoff with it? Or is it the GM has a quest to say, okay, you know, you can only defeat the Lich if you, if you have the Stone of uh, Madame Tutu or whatever. And so, okay, and I have done out this mini dungeon with guard patrols and, you know, magical traps in A, B, and C. And you know the laser dragon over here, and you have to figure out how to get in, find the thing, get out with as most most of your hit points. You know that 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 first quest is going to determine a lot because can you have a heist if you don't have a location? Are, are you if there if there's no information for the players to scout out because they have just suggested oh there's let's go to a location you never mapped out gem and uh find this treasure which has we have to presume for narrative convenience has extremely difficult but an eminently uh beatable security uh you know so we can have an exciting and balanced uh game session it again depends on the the type of game because uh say in a more sandbox style game yeah you can try to break into the vault of of everdoom but it's guarded by literal dragons. Um, it's not balanced. <laughs> but yeah, but the thing is, like, not every game system is going to very easily prepare a GM for that kind of, of uh, scenario. Like, especially if it happens like twenty minutes into a session that you thought it was going to be, oh, they're going to go to the, the this next city over and trade for a blood diamond over there, and it's like, no, 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 we've. You know, 15 sessions ago, you said there was a blood diamond in this museum. Well, obviously, you're going to raid this museum. And you're just like, uh, there's a museum? Hey, scrabble for notes. Now, some systems can handle it, and we're, I, I suspect we're going to be, have a very big side conversation about a certain blades in the dark at uh, a certain point. I was going to talk about leverage, actually, if we were going to talk oh, about Oh, well, that is also... Because uh, the thing is, there's two 10-year-old RPGs that handle this. Which are Blades in the Dark and uh, Leverage. Both handle, and Blades in the Dark steals quite a bit from Leverage. Where Leverage is functionally works as, you don't do any planning. You don't do any of that. You walk in, and you basically start riffing. And you go walk in, go to the GM, goes, okay, well, this is what the place looks like. And you start walking in, and the second he decides there's obstacles, and you roll against the obstacles, and the second something goes wrong, and something, oh, there's a, you know, uh, oh, this, there's a keypad here. And you go, and one of the characters goes, who's the hacker, goes, well, actually, earlier uh, today, I already hacked this uh, thing. It's just put in this code, zero, 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 star, resets the, bu- resets the thing. And uh, the door opens. Or the pickpocket goes, well, actually, earlier today, I stole the keycard, you know? And you roll their skill for that. And the whole thing, you just start the heist. And then every time something happens, effectively someone will flash back and goes, well, this is what I did to get around this one. So instead of having to say, oh, we're like, oh we have to think about everything before and we've got to come up with a plan. You just walk up and on the spot you go, oh, we did this. 
So basically, you know, there's an example, I just have one paragraph example here of uh, someone just discussing a leverage game where they need to steal a copy of Uddersbrook and Colton, the unspeakable cults, uh, from a, a rich old man, Nile full of sharks. They decide, oh, we've got a fake Necronomicon, we're going to sell him. And we delay the Gallagher, uh, the comedian, uh, by customs so we can go on to the island as the celebrity judges for his son's Girls Gone Wild ripoff. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and that's that's the heist. It's like you could basically cope with it's kind of it's much more of a kind of collaborative story game thing with a kind of roll of dice, come up with an idea to explain it. And that's how the game works because it's a heist RPG. And there's a lot of that you can steal for an other RPG with no problems. You can just go now, just, you know, tell me what happens. Tell me what you did earlier, you know, and you can go, well, we can systemize it by giving everyone a certain number of flashbacks to counter problems and away you go, you know, and that's, you can do this with a very small amount of hacking. You can just be like, yeah, away you go, guys. And then you don't have to have the three sessions of planning. Just start. And the GM can have thought of a bunch of obstacles and the players have to get around them. Or the GM can just be like, ah, I'm going to think of what makes sense. You know? No, it's absolutely a valid approach. And it does have the advantage of getting stuck into a, a plot. Into a plot. I, I do think uh, some players and GMs, though, uh, like the planning. Love going into details. Yes, they definitely do. And see verisimilitude in okay. These are the logical consequences of our of our preparation. Yeah, and that's sort of things like, like what is the heist? And for some people, the heist is going to be the moment the you know the walk in, prove that your character is really smart and has already planned for this, and then execute with you know some deft dice rolls, and you know presumably the GM will come up with a twist or two that you will improv around. And uh, away you go. And then you've done a heist and, you know, you didn't have to spend three sessions planning. But for other for other groups, you know, the satisfaction is going to be in going through that process of examining this world setting and, you know, getting the four plans building, you know, or dungeon or space station or what have you. And isn't the key bit here whether you want to feel the want the heist to feel like a tactical puzzle you're approaching and solving versus the heist as a narrative experience as outlined in films and TV shows mm. yeah, they're different things yeah they are like they're actually functionally two different approaches and they're very two very different gameplay experiences could you run both in the same campaign Ooh. Or would you have to go, okay, this is kind of a narrative one, or this is a this is a ta- this is a tactical heist and this is a narrative heist? I could see it. Um if you have a, a, set of, a, a situation where you have a particularly complicated heist that the GM is ready for, as opposed to uh, an improv thing that you know the uh, the players are like if you're if you're as a GM are like building up to okay, you get you've gotten all the the key codes from the five different data vaults, but now you need to actually go to the bunker in the middle of the, the mountains and actually you know, insert them into the supercomputer and save the world or whatever. And so you can have a situation where um, most of the regular vaults are, you know, you, you walk in, you spend your flashback points or whatever, uh, getting around X, Y, and Z and just get the code. And then, then there's a, a uh, big, bigger session where the players know that there's going to be infinity number of uh, twists happening because you know in the course of all this they've been pissing off factions or learned of the you know the deadly laser dragons or what have you and therefore they spend the time making the plan so that they have extra l- uh, leeway on how they use their flashback for improving around twists or, or particularly troublesome problems. So you could have it, but it is something you have to be aware of the structure of your game. And that's, I think, one of the big things we're sort of getting here is that to figure out which approach is best for either your group or for a specific situation, you need to think about like what payoff are the, are, are the players looking for in this? And, and are you in the, the situation of the, the improv-friendly narrative group that just wants to, oh, cool, we're, we're smart thieves, 
uh, let's have a you know half spend half a session on this uh, fun little aside and then go on to role playing with the king about you know what the actual price of this bloodstock diamond is or what have you or, or are they no, no 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 we want to like if we just walk in and blast away through it with you know some dice rolls and some some tokens we got for making jokes earlier uh it's going to feel very flat and like oh well, i guess this world this grim and gritty world of you know life being cheap is just a facade and we're just smashing through everything with gumption you know it feels like it's effortless that could be a hard thing to pull out of a group because a lot of groups you know you, you get people you know it's the old uh do you take milk in your coffee problem people are going to say oh no i want really hardcore meticulously planned operations but actually they would really just like to you know, feel like Mr. Ocean uh, for 10 minutes and then move on to another part of the session. And conversely, your people say they want just easy breezy game, but actually you can notice in the in the moment that they uh, they actually kind of wanted to know that all stuff was coming and come up with their own plan as opposed to just uh, toss dice at the issue. It's, it is going to be a, a difficult one. It's not going to be necessarily going to be difficult, but it can be tricky to get it like what does your your group actually want and you know adult conversations etc 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 always always you want to be offering the right gameplay experience at the right time which is always tricky uh like here's what you, here's what i want you to do uh, or here's what we want to do here's the experience we want i think you got to sort that out with your players which they're sort of after when they're running a heist and why they're running a heist. I've had games where there's been quite a few heists. I ran a Star Wars, or was I played in the Star Wars game where there were quite a lot of heists and there was quite a lot of planning. Because Star Wars has a fair bit of that because it's often your kind of guerrilla criminal operatives running against, you know, uh, uh, an imperial power or you might be doing it for your, because you're you know, scum and villainy or you might be doing it because you're rebels you need to steal stuff from the Empire. You need to hack in and steal security information. And you're kind of like a special ops unit, which is a lot like a crew of thieves with guns. You can expand the definition of heist to include special kinds of certain kinds of uh, uh, raids, where like you, you're in a. It's not like you're just walking into a dungeon and killing everything. You like you know that if you stay, stand around, elite troops will come in and wipe you out. So you're doing that. You're not you know sneaking in, grabbing something, and leaving. But you are, you know, you have an objective in mind, and you have a very specific. Um, you know, approach of violence that you have to do to get the thing and then uh, get out. So you could also say, you know, a, a more shootier version of heist is possible. And I suppose we're going to get to, you know, should heists go wrong again? Because uh, we're talking about twists. It's like, is, is, you know, the option of, oh, it's all gone wrong, let's just pull out guns and blast our way out, valid? Oh, it's absolutely 100% valid. Oh, yeah. 100%. But... <laughs> What's the best? Do you have an example of a really good pre-written heist that was? Uh, the, I, I mean, I think they're actually pretty rare. They are rare. Um, the the fantasy one that comes to mind uh, outside of the Blades of the but da- Blades of the Dark adventures is uh, kidnap the archpriest by a guy called Scarples, and it's. It, it, it's, it doesn't have stats. What it does have is a lot of information about a city and an archpriest, definitely not a pope, in a city that is definitely not Renaissance Italy. And you basically have to, to kidnap him for the not Byzantine Empire. Emperor. <laughs> and there are, the, like, it looks great. I, I'm going to run it at some stage. But the start of it actually does have ways to ideas to adapt it to uh, say cyberpunk. Uh, you're trying to capture the you know, the the, the autonomous cyber pope of of this uh, massive cult. You know, this sort of thing. But the back of it actually has a lot of advice which is more general towards uh, creating and running heist adventures. So it it actually does I, I would actually recommend giving it a look if you're keen on heist on heist adventures the other system that comes to mind quite honestly anything to do with cyberpunk because cyberpunk is rife with heists the the, the run a uh, 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 you know the big run against the corporate installation that sort of thing i know one of the the the, the latter books for 
uh, Cyberpunk 2020 had much, much more about special forces and infiltrations to the to, you know and kind of breaking the, them down into categories, including ones where uh, that are so qui- they are so quiet and unobtrusive that the target doesn't even know somebody was there. Like that's where you're trying to copy information without people knowing it's been compromised, plant bugs, uh, that sort of thing. How important is a map? For a heist, I think it's absolutely critical. I would say it's a, unless you're going with extremely abstract to take take on heists, you need a map of some sort. Like I say, if you have these sort of narrative mechanics, like uh, Blades and Dark or Leverage have, and you can just say, "All right, we're going to have X number of uh, complications to get through this, this, and this," uh, and you know, you just walk in, pass through each of those, walk out, or you know, sneak in, sneak out, etc. Uh, then you can do it out. But if you want, you want it to feel like a real part of the world, like like you're actually like taking this puzzle apart. Then you need to have the so at least some idea of where the layer. Now I think that is one of the things where I, some gems will balk at a heist because it is difficult to improv unless you have a whole bunch of you know plans of the locations to hand. Like if you're the, like you can maybe set up a dungeon as if it was a heist, and there, there's a whole other episode in why dungeons are not heists. But we can, uh, I say, future episode, future episode. But but in general, I would say some kind of layout, some kind of idea of where things lie in relation to each other, where the exits are, what walls and windows are weak enough that you could turn them into impromptu exits if you really wanted to. Watch out in case someone starts to get funny ideas about sewers. <laughs> if you want this the, this uh, heist to feel like it's happening in a, in a setting and, you know, the elements of what's in the building matter, then, yeah, you definitely need to have uh, some idea of the structure of this location. You can simulate it with, uh, like, random tables, I suppose, but you're really not in... If you're doing that, you're really not in the, uh, you know, the planning and then executing... Uh, mindset, I think. Can we do a quick boo of Dragon Heist for putting Heist on the cover and no Heist in the adventure? Yeah, and I think they they made an entire group of mini Heist adventures just to make up for it, and then then there's no Heist on the cover. It's just Keys of the Golden Vault, and this is like, okay, but what's in the Golden Vault? Eh, That's probably but like it doesn't sell the same way as dragon heist Ooh, a hei- I guess people bought that going I'm excited to run a heist adventure and then there's no heist adventure they should have been filleted for that <laughs> well technically I think their idea was that you are there to stop the bad guys from heisting uh, the adventure and it's just like they, they, they had not got the memo that it is you know it is the 2020s and you know people love you know, being being the one who gets one over, and that, that like we've been talking for a while about how difficult heists are, but it is one of those. I'm not saying it's the dark souls of game scenarios or anything, but it is one of those things where it is high risk, high satisfaction. If you if you do it right, it is uh, you know it's difficult. You've done something that took effort and planning, or you know, real narrative chops. If you're uh, if you if you're going for style over uh, over you know grittiness you know then you you showed your style chops by figuring out all these cool ways to get around all these weird twists that come out of nowhere. That's the thing you're trying to aim for is this this over normal scenario of you know just pick someone's pocket or you know I, I lean in through a window steal the jewelry chest and tumble check to get away. You know you're doing this additional setup because you want to have a very specific sense of we overcame something complicated yes yes sir yeah i mean very satisfying as a certain 80s tv character point out when a plan comes together Mm -hmm. i i I suppose it kind of ties it like for me anyway it kind of ties into the idea of combat as sport versus combat as war where preparation like in the latter preparation means you don't have to well you, you don't have as much uh, shooting or bleeding uh for for when things go down you have to be in a certain mindset i, I guess as things and 
it is something you're going to have to interrogate. Um, well, all jamming is ultimately, you know, trying to figure out what the, these three to five wackos at your table actually want. If you're planning on stealing something from the adventuring party, uh, maybe one of our topics or our snazzy intro or maybe even just the uh, contents of our Discord, why not come along and join us on some of our socials or our Discord or anywhere we hang out, really. But for now, this party's over. Thank you for listening to The Adventuring Party. Join us on our Discord server, where we keep the party going after hours. Uh, otherwise, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, or Twitter, or, or you can email the hosts at party at theadventuringparty.net. The Adventuring Party is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike Version 3 license. But you probably knew that already. We hope you enjoyed the episode, and look forward to seeing you back here next week. Goodbye.